Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a hardware tour of this Mantec Net Backup 5230. So of course, as you can tell by the title, I got this for free and with the arrays that I'm gonna talk about later and everything, it adds up to 106 terabytes unformatted and that's about 80 terabytes with the RAID 6 and with the drive formatting all added up. So before I get into that, I'm just gonna talk about how I ended up getting this server, the backstory behind that. So in early July of 2018, I went to my friend's house and in his basement was one of the storage and enclosures that goes with this. And I pulled out one of the drives and it was a three terabyte. The unit is a 3U array and there are 16 drives. So if you do the math, three times 16 is 48 terabytes in one of those arrays. So I asked my friend about it. He said it had been sitting in the same place for two years, not being used for anything. So I jokingly asked if I could have it. A few months pass and it's the beginning of September and my friend finally asked his dad if I could have it and the dad said I could just have it for free, everything, server, arrays, everything. And about three weeks ago, I went over to his house for a party and I brought the thing home. So I've done a bit of research into this machine and I'll go over that later in the video. It's a really nice machine, I'll get into that more in the hardware tour, which I guess I can start now. So if I remove the front bezel, you can see we have 12 drive slots up front. When I got the server, only 10 of them were populated and you can see those have the one terabyte stickers on them. And then these two spots, this one is blank right now. It just has a blanking piece in it. And then this one was also blank, but it has a 500 gig drive in that that I threw in to put Linux on. Sorry about the cut. My camera battery ran out, so I switched to my iPhone. So the front panel here, obviously we have power and the chassis ID thing. And then I believe that's a reset button. And then we have LAN lights for the four NICs on the back. And then we have an NMI button there, which is kind of like a reset button, I think, or something. I'm not really sure exactly what it's for or what it does. Flipping the machine around to the back shows what is probably my favorite part of the server. So the IO configuration here, we have four gigabit NICs. These are RJ45 and also we have VGA for the display output. I'm not sure what this does, it's some kind of console port, I've never really been sure what that does, especially because we have IPMI right here, and then three USB 2, I believe those are. And then in this bottom slot here we have a RAID controller, and then an 8 gigabit NIC, dual port 8 gigabit SFP plus fiber NIC, and then we have three more of those over here. And then up top here we have a dual 10 gigabit SFP fiber NIC, that is an Intel X520 DA2 I believe. And then on the bottom here, we have an Intel IO module that is a dual 10 gigabit SFP fiber NIC. And then last but not least, we have our redundant power supplies. So this is a one plus one redundant configuration. Both of these power supplies are 750 watts and they are 80 plus platinum. I believe I can buy replacements of these from Intel, but they're like 250 bucks a piece. So hopefully they don't die anytime soon. So to get into the server, I have three Phillips screws here and then one back here. I'm gonna remove those. I forgot to mention if I can find one, I can remove the back plane and 12 by three and a half inch drive system and install a 24 by two and a half inch drive system up front. And I might actually do that, like I said, if I can find it because I haven't had any luck and I doubt Intel still sells parts for the server, more on Intel later. So of course, opening the top of the server, I just have to slide off this top panel and then lift it off. So starting off up front, we have the fans. These are all Nidec Ultraflow 60 millimeter fans, and they get loud when they're running full speed, but it's barely audible when the server is at idle. So those, of course, are hot swappable, it looks like. So that's nice. And if I pan the camera over here and remove this, this is an air baffle that kind of directs the air more into the CPU heat sinks and everything and the RAM. So you can see we have quite a bit of RAM in here, also dual processors. Each of these processors is an Intel Xeon E5-2620. They're not called V1s, but I refer to them as V1s because they're earlier than V2s, I guess. Helps to understand what they actually are. And then as for the RAM, we have 24 RAM slots on the board, which is quite awesome. And eight of them are filled with these blanking plates, which leaves a total of 16 memory modules in here. So when I first opened up the server, I pulled one of these out. And let me see if I can get this one, or I'll just go with this one at the end because it's easier. 
if we flip it around here, there is nothing referring to the capacity of these DIMMs. But if you look up some of the numbers on the label, you will find that they are each 8 gigabyte modules of DDR3 ECC, presumably. And of course, earlier I said 16 modules in here, so 16 times 8 is 128 gigs of RAM. So I'll probably sell the RAM that I don't need, and it actually looks like I'll be pushing that with running ZFS on here, because ZFS needs about a gig of RAM per terabyte of storage. And then plus I'm going to be running virtual machines on here when I deploy it. So if you look down into the server, there are are many RAID controllers here. This one has two of these thick SAS cables. I'm not actually sure what those are called, but they use the SFF8087 connector. And then we also have one here. So that's for the 12 drives up front, four per cable. And then we have our X520 here, an eight gigabit NIC down here. And then below that one is our RAID controller for the external arrays. And those use the external SAS cables, SFF8088. I'm not sure what those are called either. And then in the panning of the camera over there, you can barely see the backup battery for one RAID controller there. And then over here on top of the power supplies, this one is for the others. So of course, I talked about this earlier in the video, but we have four 8 gigabit NICs, each are dual port. So essentially eight 8 gigabit NICs. We also have dual, dual port 10 gigabit NICs in here. So of course the X520 and the Intel IO module on the bottom there for a total of four 10 gigabit NICs. So I do plan on using those all for something. Basically, I heard about an operating system called Vios, that's V-Y-O-S, and that would allow me to make all of these into basically a network switch. So I was thinking I'm going to have one of the 10 gigabit NICs, and that's going to be the I.O. module, be for the file server part of it. That will be given a dual 10 gigabit aggregation into a 10 gigabit NIC for the switch. And then I'm gonna have one 10 gigabit NIC for my two client computers. And the rest eight gigabit NICs are going to go out to my friend's computers. I'll also put my Intel Pro 1000 T4 in here, and that will give a four gigabit link to my 48 port gigabit switch that I'm getting. There are also four gigabit NICs in the bottom, and two of those will be for a router, and then the other two will probably be part of that switch. So this is one of the two arrays I was talking about. Basically, this was the first thing I found from the server. And then when I went to get the server, I opened up one of the boxes and there was another one of these sitting in there. And that one looks brand new. So you can see we have 16 drives in here. Each of these is three terabytes, like I said. If I go ahead and pull these out, they are actually HDST SAS drives. And I'm gonna hold this up to the camera. You can see capacity three terabyte. So. 48 terabytes in each of these arrays, and of course, like I said, formatting and RAID configuration drops that down to about 39 per each. So this actually reminds me of my X-Servs because the top light will glow green and the bottom will glow blue. Same colors as the x serve and of course it's brushed aluminum. And I'll show you all that later when I actually turn the server on. And then looking at the side here, we have a power and something and then something. And then we have the two links for the SAS, and then I believe, I'm not really sure what that one does either. I'm gonna have to look at the manual for this, which I did find online. So on the back here, we have the RAID controller on the top and the power supply on the bottom. You can see SAS in and SAS out. SAS out will go to the second one of these arrays. And then we also have some kind of console thing. Once again, I don't really know what that's for. And then our power supplies are 580 watt. This is once again, a one plus one redundant configuration takes IEC input, and then we have our power switches on the back, along with some nice San Ace 80 fans to move the air through the whole thing. So as with most servers, this thing gets really loud when it turns on, but the fans ramp down. This one's a bit louder than the server itself, but it has a nice hum to it, so that's okay. So just another thing that I kind of want to address is a few times I mentioned Intel. Of course, this is a Symantec branded server but I looked up some model numbers on it, and it turns out this is a rebranded Intel platform. So that's pretty cool. That means it can for sure run x86 operating systems, stuff like that. I think x86 operating system would be the right term as opposed to being Symantec proprietary. So the plan for this server is basically I am going to be moving out in the next eight to 10 months. I'm gonna be moving in with some friends near college. So they are all gamers and my plan was along with using this as my file server, I'm gonna be running a bunch of different things from it, such as a camera server, a caching server, because like I said, they're gamers and downloading Steam games is gonna be a lot faster if I'm using the cache server. 
especially because we're moving out, we might have a data cap as well. I'm also going to be hosting game servers and a website from here, stuff like that. One thing I do worry about is this machine alone consumes a lot of power. It'll idle at around 285 watts. And of course, that's a lot, especially because I'm going to be just moving out. It's going to be kind of hard to pay for the power bill. And then the arrays are going to be consuming probably the same amount together. So to counter that, I'm going to be upgrading the processors. I'm going to be throwing in Xeon E5 2630LV2s in here. So those, of course, are low-power Xeons, and it's actually kind of funny. I believe the 2620 is a 95 watt processor and the 2630LV2 is a 60 watt processor, but the 2630LV2 is more powerful. So that will allow me to take quite a bit off of the power consumption here, especially because I'm going to be putting quite a heavy load on the server. Like I said, my friends will be getting 8 gigabit links through the server, though most of the time they're not going to be saturating it, might as well because it's pretty cheap to do that. And then the server is also going to be a router, the router will be tied into that switch, so that's how everyone will access the internet. I'm also going to be upgrading the hard drives in here, probably at least in the server. So the three bays on the left side are probably going to get SSDs and that will allow me to have an unraid cache because I'm running on RAID on here, and then there's going to be, like I said, a cache on the server, and that will access that third SSD. Moving over from that, I'm going to put an 8 terabyte in the bottom, and then two 4 terabytes in RAID 0 in the top above that, and that's the same configuration that's in my server now. So things like virtual machines and Minecraft servers and all of that will run off of that. And then in the six bays on the right side, I'm probably going to be taking three terabyte drives out of the arrays and putting them in there because I'm not really sure if I'm going to be running the arrays considering how much power they're going to use. And it's going to take a while to fill 48 terabytes. So why have all those drives running using runtime hours and taking up power if they're not being utilized? If I do use one of the arrays, I'll probably use the other as a backup and that backup will have to be on a separate server because the array has to be running and present before the server can be turned on. And that's just kind of how the interface works. So like I said, I'll be running Unraid on here most likely, which is nice because Unraid supports Docker and that's how I'm going to be running the caching servers. The only thing that might be problematic is I believe I can only have one array with 30 drives or 30 devices in it. And of course, I'm going to have a separate SSD for caching and then the two Unraid cache drives, which are part of the array. And then I'll have three other drives and then the actual Unraid array. So I'm not really sure if I can do that at all or how that's going to work if I can. But in the next video about this server, I will be in installing the Unraid trial on here. So as promised, to finish off this video, I'm going to be turning on the server for you. So I'm going to go ahead and get that all set up and continue filming when it's ready to go. So I have everything set up and ready to go. So I'm going to flick the switch on the power strip and you'll hear the server power supplies rev up and then rev back down. And then I'll go ahead and turn on the array and then I'll actually turn on the server itself. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the RAID array. If I can reach the power switches. So as I'm sure you heard, it starts up pretty loud, but then the fans rev down to a kind of quiet, still certainly audible level. This is kind of what I'd expect from equipment like this. And then you're probably just barely able to see it. The blue lights on the drives are all coming up. And of course these do staggered spin up. So with the array online, we can go ahead and fire up the actual server. So come to think of it, I should have warned you about the sound from the RAID array, so I guess this is my chance to redeem myself. The server is also pretty loud when it turns on, so just get prepared if it gets too loud, headphone users, you know. So when I hit the power button, you're going to see some text come up on the top left corner of the screen, and then shortly after that, the fans will rev up and then die back down. So I guess here we go.
So this is about how loud the server normally is. It takes about five minutes to get into an operating system as well, because it has all the NICs and RAID cards to initialize. So my intention was to have this machine boot into Linux, and then that would kind of be the end of the video. I wasn't really going to show you anything there, but you can see we have kind of an issue with our RAID something. And so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the server. Because like I said, there was nothing I wanted to show you in Linux. Also quickly, if I pan over here, you can see the drives are green and blue. I'm actually going to take the camera off the tripod for a sec and show you that a bit better. So you can see green and blue. We have all of these lights on the front of it. So for turning off the array, I just have to reach around back and turn off the power supply switches. And there we go, all is quiet. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about the server. So I guess thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.